what can I say about this car? This is a 1983 Toyota Corolla KE70. So it still has the flat front as opposed to the slant front, which came out in 1983. But I think this is one of the last uh, flat fronts ever made in this year. It's the high cam which I think was just a marketing ploy by Toyota in order to make their little 1.3 single cam motors sound a little bit more exciting. But essentially, she is the exact same car as that one right there. Let me show you inside. I think I've got the keys, unless it's open. It is open. So, completely stock. Grandma spec K70 with what is that? Uh, 292,570 kilometers. We've got the four speed transmission. Obviously, a wagon. Really nice interior. Roof racks. The only problem with this car at the moment is rust. She's got some pretty bad rust. Around the car. Especially, we've got some really bad rust there at the door. Here on the roof, but all fixable. And she's got some really shiny paint on her as well, under all the dust. So I think with a bit of polish, this should come up. And I've never seen these crawlers with clear coat. I thought they all came out without clear coat because it's my car or sorry the old one I don't think this is clear coat I always thought that they came out with essentially just a couple of layers of the paint and then they polished them up but this one seems like it has a clear coat unless I was wrong this one seems to have a clear coat and it's obviously peeling off but that's fixable as well and that's the least of my worries at the moment but let's have a look under the power barn all right, so what we've got here, ladies and gentlemen, is a 4K, C, 4K carbureted motor. It's a 1.3 liter single overhead cam with push rod, no, not overhead cam, single cam with push rods. And it has 290,000 kilometers. And it is completely bog stock. This is the most complete Corolla I have ever seen. It has not been touched whatsoever really really good condition and this is what we're gonna be, try to be try to start today it's got a clutch fan which I've never seen before on one of these seems like all the fusible links are still sort of working might need a new battery terminal there completely stuck let's check this let's check the air filter what have you got? Aha! Uh -huh. It's not doing too bad either. I mean, it definitely could use a change, but... Carburetor looks good. I don't remember where the linkage is. I haven't touched one of these in a while. Ah, uh, it's at the back. Do we spray anything? Accelerator, pu accelerator pump seems to be working. Which is good. We do seem to have some sort of coolant leak there. Again. Are you still on? Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll try again because we're getting fuel out of the uh, 
uh, and tank now. Go ahead. You might just keep, keep having to go back and forth. I think the starter motor solenoid's a bit messed up. is actually pretty good. Really soft. Jason Matthews, thanks to Best Sheds. Best Sheds 20% sale is on now. Best Sheds 20% sale, everyone. Welcome to the right home here in it's the very, beautiful city of very Sydney. loud. Actually, you can turn it off. We should probably be listening to the car. You should definitely be listening to the car. Boom. Oh. Hey! <laughs> Seatbelt is a good idea. Does this work? Do we have water in it? The fact that it's, the key, I can't see the key unless the indicators work. Do the brakes work? Yes, brakes are fine, everyone. Rear view mirror. It's fine. I mean, the steering's not fun. <laughs> She's all good. Dirty. The differential's not even that loud. I mean, it's not loud at all. No, it's not. It's Which a really quiet car, actually. The temperature is working. I mean, maybe. Oh, that's second gear. I mean, fourth gear needs to go into second. <laughs> Do the wipers work? <laughs> works, which I couldn't say about the blue Corolla. <laughs> Temperature is going up fine. Obviously we need to figure something out in terms of the why the engine needs to be on like, uh, what do you call it? Why I need to have the choke on all the time to get it to run. I think there must be a leak, an air leak or something somewhere. Temperature is going up. I'm happy about that. Wipers work. We might not have any fuel. I mean, any Air, uh, oh, any water in there. I should probably put it in, in gear. I just haven't used a four speed gearbox in a while. <laughs>
And the clutch is so soft. Quickly double check the motor, just make sure nothing's set on fire, and then Lily's gonna get a turn. Everything looks good. Your turn. Okay. How do you feel? Great. Great? Let's get it. Let's get it. Sit down. Um. The clutch, it the poor is, clutch is, is gone. It is yeah. very soft. Yeah. It's like jelly. Yeah, I know. But it drives fine, hey? Yeah. It drives like perfectly. You like it? I like it as well. power steering issues and I have another one. The little birds. Oh. Little birds get out of here. Alright, you can just stop her here for a second. Yeah. What what about the uh <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Teachers were amazed at how well I could read the fence on and that I knew the names of all the resources. I what used to I read the form guide with my dad. When our children were young, no TV was allowed at dinner, and we would do the <laughs> no TV. Together. Thirty years later, How's the temperature? they regularly thrash me Good. at Wordle. Still pretty low. Lovely story, Peter. Thanks very much. Looking at uh, looking everything's at, fine. Like okay, so if I go this, and why this thing actually, maybe we'll just do it later. In the rate of children with short sight. Okay, everything works there. You don't have anything in the glove box. Um, we have a couple, we have literally so we have much a, money. A penny. A little one cent coin. And then there's three two cent coins. Wait, I cannot get a focus on this. Focus camera! The car came with seven cents. Yeah. Making money. We're literally making money right now. Alright, I'm gonna get out if you wanted to try and park her. Peter Parker. Yeah, that's fine. All right, can you put the choke in? Just press that thing in. Yeah, all right. So we gotta figure that out. But, all right, car can go off. But hey, that's a pretty small problem to fix. Considering.
considering everything, a pretty small problem to fix. Okay. Sure. She runs. She drives. And need to um, get a roadworthy for her now. Once we get a roadworthy, put her on the street, drive her, and take her for a wash take her home and then just start sort of working on it slowly. We were both a bit tired, but we got it. Did ya? I woke up at 7. <laughs> anyway, um... We're gonna go for a quick cruise in the Corolla. Um, yeah, quick cruise. Uh, this would make a good, like, generator. That I used to have my... <laughs> Genius. Genius level stuff. What do we do with this now? Like, we just have this. We sell it. Like, where's it gonna go? Where are gonna put this? We're probably gonna put it next to the car somewhere. Anyway, let me just say something. Um, engine is out. Caleb, Jesus Christ, nearly hit the grill. <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. You did it before. Welcome back to Good Stuff TV, Sprit and Gas and Oiling Ass episode 2. It has been a while since the last episode. A lot has happened and I am going to probably already have released a video uh, updating what has happened. But on this episode I wanted to continue the journey on replacing the um, motor with the 4AGE, the new 4AGE. And we start on the brown Corolla. So, you might have already seen, we've already made a bit of progress. Uh, Let me turn the camera around. We've already made a bit of progress getting the 4K out, just over there. So, now that that is out, we have got a long, 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 long list of things that we need to do. So. But regardless, let's get stuck in. Uh, I'm gonna quickly run, run you through this list that I've made up and then what I'm gonna try and get done today. I don't have a lot of time today, but I'm gonna try and get through as much as I can. So let's turn the camera around. We will be starting, sorry. What we have um, first, this is a list in no particular order of the things that I can remember that need to be done to uh, get this motor in. What motor? The 4AGE. So, to start off with, 
uh, we need to install the cross member from the uh, AE71 Corolla that used to be in the old blue Corolla which is sitting just in there and you may be asking well why do I need to use that and not just use the cross member out of my stock Corolla well if you have an AE71 and it has a 4AC in it not the 4K, that's a 4K. If yours does not look like that, and it looks like, I'll probably put a photo up on the screen, and it looks like that, then you don't need to replace your, uh, you don't need to replace your cross member. But if you have a 4K, you need to replace it because the engine mounts are actually in a different location. Let's say, for example, though, you do not have access to a cross member from an AE71. What you can do is there is a very nice gentleman on the internet, uh, I know it's especially here in Australia, uh, his company is called KE Conversions and you can buy a uh, cross member kit, I believe you send him your cross member, so you take it out, you send it to him and he welds on the uh, engine mounts in the right location. Alright, next clutch hole I just put in clutch hole but essentially what that means is the 4AGE requires a hydraulic clutch the KE70 with a 4K only had a um, what do you call it a cable clutch you can see it just over here where are you big dog here you are so this guy right here um, comes out of the firewall and essentially when you put your foot on the clutch it pulls on this cable and it um, it uh, engages the clutch but that won't work on the T50s because the T50s these transmissions here the ones that um, are used for the 4k require as you can see there a hydraulic uh, clutch that's a slave cylinder so a slave cylinder requires a master cylinder and they require hydraulic uh, fluid in order to work so what does clutch hole mean clutch hole essentially means that using this tool over here that i also got from ke conversions you can install it i believe it was about here Right, um, maybe, nope, I was wrong. So essentially, it helps you find the location holes and where you need to cut out to get the master cylinder right there. So we'll be using that. Next, what do we have next? Next we have the pedal box. Pedal box, because we've changed from a uh, clutch cable to a hydraulic clutch, we need a pedal box that has a hydraulic clutch actuating mechanism, essentially. And so, this guy right here is the pedal box that I sent to KE Conversions uh, to get modified. This was a stock 4K pedal box. I sent it to him, um, and he sends it back with a couple of special welded bits, and he also sends you a master cylinder uh, and a um, hydraulic line as well, which is very useful. This needs to replace the pedal box in there, which is a bit of a process. It requires removing uh, quite a lot of the dash in order to get that in there. So that's gonna be a big job. Next. We have got um, Taco Dash, which is just the dash that I have, that one there, that has a tachometer on it. See, where is it? Come on, light. And focus, and focus. And it, essentially, this dash has a tachometer. That dash does not, which is not fun and not cool. So we will be replacing that. Uh, balancing drive shaft, that just requires me taking my drive shaft to get balanced. And in terms of drive shaft, there is something else to consider. So, the splines out the back of a 
4K with a transmission like this are not the same as the splines that come out of these transmissions. So what you need to do and what I have already done is you need to take the half of the drive shaft that comes here. Um, you need to find that and then the other half is the drive shaft that you already had on your car. So where is my drive shaft? Here it is. So I'll actually compare the two, bear with me. Okay, so these are two drive shafts. This one right here is um, the drive shaft that you can use on the 4AGE with the T50 transmission. This one right here is the one that you can only use uh, and the one that came out of this stock car. Okay, so the splines here, the ones that, this part that goes into the transmission are slightly different. This one's uh, much bigger, I believe, from the look of it. Maybe not, but essentially they have different splines. So this guy will not fit on the 4 edge E transmission. So I had the luck of getting a um, full drive shaft when I bought that transmission over there. So what I did, because I have a station wagon and this does not apply to sedans, I had to um, undo it in the middle here, which is just a nut and then these two just pop out and I grabbed the back half of this one right here right and then I stuck it onto there so then I have a half wagon half T50 drive shaft that I can then use to connect the T50 with my wagon I hope that will make sense um, if it doesn't make sense feel free to message me or comment uh, and I'll sort of try and make a bit more sense of that all right next spigot bearing so spigot bearing is a little bearing guy sometimes they're a bush they're like a copper bush but essentially what they do they just hold the end of the output shaft on these transmissions so if I put that guy back there um, and I get a light because it's very dark so you can see this is the output shaft of the transmission that little that little guy right at the end here okay needs to sit um, right at the back if I can this is difficult to do one-handed right at the inside here essentially in the crankshaft right at the back of the crankshaft in front-wheel drive motors the transmissions don't have that little bit they don't they don't have this so they don't need that uh, spigot bearing, but when you go to a rear-wheel drive transmission, they do need that spigot bearing. So essentially, if you buy a front-wheel drive motor, you have to remove the clutch and flywheel, push this little spigot bearing, which you can find on um, like SQ Engineering and uh, tinkering on Toyota's websites. You push that bearing into the back of the crankshaft so that your transmission will have the output shaft of your transmission will have something to sort of sit on okay this one already has one but i want to replace it because i've already bought another one anyway next now we're sort of getting to the just putting everything back together uh, we installed the transmission onto the motor which is just going to require us to put the motor on uh, the engine crane and putting the newer transmission onto the back uh, then I've also got transmission support beams which I'll give a clean and a paint because they're very yucky and I'll they just sort of bolt on the side there and they bolt into the transmission so it all just becomes one big package now the only problem I may face is that that slave cylinder may hit or may interfere with this um what do you call these guys this exhaust so i don't know if that's going to happen yet i really hope it doesn't because then that, that would require me having to buy 
a Japanese a JDM bell housing for my transmission, which would not be fun. But yeah, that's something we're going to figure out later. So install transmission. Uh, then we need to take the uh, we need to install the clutch and slave clutch slave and master cylinders. One go the slave goes on the transmission like I just talked about, and the master cylinder goes on to the firewall like I talked about before. The throwout bearing it needs to be replaced on the transmission. If you're not sure what a throwout bearing is, you'll see it on that episode. Otherwise, do a bit of um, I'm sure there's videos out there. Fuel tank EFI that is a big job, uh, big because I have never done it before and I'm scared. Essentially, a carburetor, a carburetor only needs about 7 to 9 PSI of fuel pressure in order to work. They just need the pressure to um, fill up. It's very dark. They essentially just need the fuel pressure to fill up the fuel bowl. But when it comes to EFI, EFI goodness. Sorry, let me just adjust my ND filter. When it comes to EFI, um, it's sort of in the name, it's fuel injection. And in order to inject something, you need a lot of pressure behind it. A carbureted motor, because it only needs about seven to nine PSI pressure, it has a little, a little, a little fuel pump. Where is it? A little fuel pump guy. A little fuel, fuel pump guy here. That is driven off of the camshaft and it creates about that seven to nine PSI of fuel pressure. So seven to nine is not enough. These need to run, I'm sorry if I'm all over the place, but just keep up, keep up. So these, sorry, I'm just, well, it's a bit yucky in there, hey? Anyway, um, so th that, that seven to nine PSI is obviously not enough to run a fuel injection system because these need about 40 PSI. So, uh, in order to have that 40 PSI of fuel pressure, we need to put a fuel pump, hello, we need to put a fuel pump into the fuel tank. I have gotten one from EFI Hardware, a Delphi fuel pump and um, adapter kit from, I think a BA Falcon. So it's essentially a steel ring that you weld onto the fuel tank. You obviously have to cut out the hole in the fuel tank. All of this is very scary, by the way. I've never done this before. Um, cut out the hole in the fuel tank, weld the steel flange, bolt your fuel pump to it, and then you wire it all up. That fuel pump will be able to get you that 40 something PSI. And then all that pressure runs to your fuel rail, which sits right on top of your injectors. And then it pressurizes the whole system. And whenever you want that injector to fire, there's a little solenoid, it opens, lets it go, and then closes again. A um, bit of a 101 on fuel injectors. I will be going in more detail. Uh, I will obviously be going into more detail on everything as the videos come out. I feel like this is a very uh, quick and easy, but also very complicated way of just sort of explaining everything that needs to go into it but I thought I'd run through it just to make a bit of an episode of it. Uh, and, and also just so you can sort of understand what you need to get. You know, there's a big list of things and uh, save you having to watch all the other episodes, you might just be able to start sort of making a list now. What do we got next? So fuel tank EFI. So uh, I've, I know I've already talked about it, but just to finish saying a couple of last things in order to weld and cut and do all that stuff we obviously need to remove the fuel tank so we're going to remove the fuel tank clean it cut it weld it do the stuff put it back in uh, then we install the motor and transmission which is going to be cool and then cooling is going to be radiator uh, radiator hoses etc etc heater uh, you might have seen the last episode i organized the heater system TVs is something that I definitely want to uh, make work on this motor as well. I would have talked about that in a previous episode. Oil and filter, transmission oil. I need to make. I need to get an exhaust made or make it myself. Figure out ECU wiring. Start the motor and then take it on its maiden 
voyage. Okay, that was that was not very comedic effect, but because this autofocus sucks. Come on, it's like yes, I got it. Nope, I don't. All right. Anyway, now you may be asking, well, Luca, what in the world are we doing today? Today, I need to replace this cross member. That's all I want to do today. I do not have a lot of time. Um, it is. I don't have my clock on me. It is. What is wrong with this? 12.39. And I need to be out of here by 4 o'clock. So. Let's, let's dig into it.